So today I want to model this uh, sci-fi coffee mug from an artist named Mark B. Tomlinson. I think it's a smart little design and uh, we can make a simplified version of this in plasticity in about 10 minutes so it should make for a good tutorial video. Let's get started. So first let's make a cylinder. Um, I'm gonna lock onto the z-axis and then looking in the side view I'm just gonna adjust the proportions a little bit. So in the original design the cylinder has a bit of a draft angle so I can eyeball it here or just type in minus two which is what I'll do here. So first I'll block out the rough shape. We need to fill it on the bottom and we need to cut also at the top. So we need a little more space and I'll draw a line and we can make a cut for the lid. I'm just uh, eyeballing the proportions here, um, maybe a little taller. And then now let's start cutting on the side. Um, his original cut is at an angle, so I'm holding control so that I don't snap onto anything. So I want to make this cut, although I accidentally clicked on the face. Let's try again. Okay, so the cut's good. I'm just going to delete the line and, the, and, the, and that little body. And so we need to get the proportions right. I think we can push things down a little bit. Um, and I need to see the threads in place before I know the proportions. So to do this, I'm going to turn off the face snap so I can snap to the z-axis. So I'm making a little helix or spiral here, turning the face snap back on so I can make it exactly the right size. Now I counted, there should be about 10 rings. So I'm going to use the dialog to drag it out to 10. And we also want an angle that matches our draft angle from before. So we could eyeball it or remember we used two, so I can just type two. Now, um, I'm just gonna move it into place because we're just kind of doing a block out. So let's get the proportions of everything right. I'm gonna show two options. One, we can offset the face just like that, or we can select the faces and move them. So here I'm moving them on the Z axis. So it looks good. Let's give it a little fillet so that we know how much space we have. And now uh, we can go ahead and create a circle and create the little thing that is is it a sci-fi spout? Is it a thumb holder? I don't know. But anyway, we're going to extrude this. Let's look in the side view just to get the right proportions. And uh, we need to cut this. So I'm going to draw a line. This line I remember is straight from the design. And so that I don't accidentally snap on things, I'm just going to hit like Z to lock onto the Z axis. Um, and now we'll just do a little cut. So I just want to push these faces around uh, till they look like the proportions are approximately right. I don't know. It doesn't need to be exact, but tweak till our heart is content. And that looks good enough. I think we can, we can do some fillets now. So let me delete the curve. And then I'll just fillet these two edges. Um, looks good. And we'll Boolean this together and we'll do a fillet here. Okay, good enough. Let's, uh, let's mirror that over, Alt-X, and then, uh, yeah, looks good. I think that's the basic shape for sure. I doubt the proportions are exactly right, but let's, uh, let's move on to the top. I'm gonna do a center uh, square right, rectangle right here. I'm gonna hold down Control so I can get an asymmetrical shape. Okay, and the next step is to give it a little fillet it's round enough, I think, and then we're gonna move it. Um, we're gonna move it to the edge of the cup lid thingy. Uh, let me turn off X-ray thing so I can easily snap it to the edge. And so the next step is we're just gonna radial array that around the lid. And with that as the center point, I can use Control and mouse wheel up and down to add more items. And then I don't know the exact number, but that's probably good enough. And then the next step is we can take all these curves and we can extrude them out and Boolean them together. We also need to extrude them in just to be super certain that everything overlaps. And so now we select all the objects, QQ to union them together, and we have our lid. Let me hide that and delete all of the curves for now just to simplify and bring it back and it looks pretty good. So next I wanna do the detailing on the top of the lid. It's basically a circle and a rectangle. Um, and so I'm gonna do a center rectangle again. 
and we're just gonna eyeball the shape. There are these four circles at the intersection, so we can just draw a circle at the intersection, and then let me select just the circle, and I can duplicate that with Shift D, and then F for freestyle move from one intersection to another. And then I'm just gonna repeat that process, Shift D, F, Shift D, F. So that's roughly the profile we want. We just need to extrude that and get the proportions, the height. Right, so I'm just gonna tweak it a little bit here and there until I get something I'm happy with. Okay, maybe a little bit shorter. All right, now the next thing we need to do is cut it into shape. So I'm gonna show you a cool feature. We can run the cut command and then use the cup itself as our cutter. Love that feature. Okay, let me hide these things just so I can delete these curves because we don't really need them anymore. Um, box selecting from side view and X and they're gone, okay. So there's another indentation at the top of the cup. I'm just gonna hit space and go make a construction plane at the top of the cup. The design kind of echoes the outer thing. It's not quite an offset, but it's another circle with a center rectangle. And so we're just gonna roughly make the shape and then extrude that region a little bit down. We need to make it a cutter, so let's cut into that object. And if we're happy with the height, that's, uh, that's good enough. Now we can get rid of the the um, the curves, and the next thing we need to do is there are four cuts for the four circles. Okay, so again on the construction plane of the top of the cup, I'm gonna draw a circle, and I'll mirror it this time rather than redraw it um, into the four locations. Okay. So then I'm gonna select the regions and we're gonna extrude them down. I want them to be the same depth as that thing, the face. So I can hold control and, and click on the face to do that. But I actually forgot to make this a cutter, so let's cut. Um, there we go, it looks good. They're exactly the same height. I'm gonna hide, I'm gonna delete the curves, bring it back, and this is our lid. It looks roughly correct, I think. Boolean it together. Okay, now let's uh, take care of these threads, I think. So we can select the, the helix and then run the pipe command with P. Um, that by default is this kind of round pipe, but in the design it looks like it's a four-sided kind of thing, so I'm gonna just tweak the proportions here, um, get it into place. That seems like the right thickness to me, and then I'm just gonna boolean that on, not as a difference, as a, as a union, um, onto the cup. This is quite an expensive operation actually, and uh, once that's done, we can uh, delete the curve. Let me hide it again, delete the curve, unhide it. And now we can start filleting. I'll just start by, uh, by selecting um, like one edge and starting a tiny little fillet. And once I get the proportions a little bit right, we can add some more edges. So that looks fine, something a little bit smaller. And now by holding tab, I can actually add more edges to the command. So let's add two more. Tab, I'm holding tab and then I let go. It's a bit of an expensive operation and we're good. I'm happy, right click to confirm. I think that looks pretty close to the design. Now we can fill it the rest of the, of the object. Actually, uh, let me do this simultaneously on both sides. So I'm gonna do shift to select that, go to the other side, shift to select that, shift to select that. Obviously we can mirror, but like, why mirror? Um, and, uh, and now we can do the top. Now, all of these edges are um, not smoothly connected, so I need to select them uh, one by one. I could probably think of a smarter way of doing this. And of course, I could just mirror things, um, but uh, let's just do it by hand for now. I'm getting, I'm, yeah. Um, let me turn off the, the x-ray vision so that this is easier to do. Um, and I think there's just a couple more. Boom, 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 and give it a little fillet. Okay, and then on the edge too. And I think that's kind of enough. This is obviously not the entire design. There's a lot of details missing. Um, but roughly speaking, this is like a simplified version of Mark's original design. I think it looks pretty cool, and it's a good showcase of some of the intermediate features of plasticity. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Um, so let me say thanks to Mark for letting me copy his design, 
And also, I really wanted to say thank you to all of my viewers. The last video got a huge amount of attention and, uh, and a huge amount of enthusiasm, and that's really gratifying because I'm working really hard on this software, and it's important that artists are excited to use it. So uh, thanks. Thanks.